Zealand Short Course Championships. A fantastic uh, session this morning, the third session of the heats with Sophie Pascoe, the Paralympian, the legend of Paralympic swimming, breaking the world record in the 50 metres breaststroke, which was an exciting swim, and she was very, very happy about that one. As was Nikita Howarth, who broke the New Zealand record in her class in the 100 metres freestyle. Looking ahead to this final session this evening, the men's 100 metre freestyle, we kick off with Ben Littlejohn, Taiko Toreki, uh, Torepi Ormsby and Zach Reed all going under 50 seconds this morning. It's going to be a tight final this evening. And in the para multi-class 100 freestyle, looking out for Jack Bugler, uh, who's looking to try and get the New Zealand record in the S14 class. The women's 100 freestyle will follow in a tight race there. There was uh, Laura Littlejohn and Erica Fairweather, who were neck and neck this morning in the heats, and they'll be in lane four and five. And in the para, multi-class 100 freestyle for women, we're looking out for Jane Fox to potentially take her own New Zealand record in that event. And swimmers to watch for, uh, Gabby Smith and Lily Fox Mason, up and comers. We move there to the 400 individual medley, which is going to be a great race. Uh, in lane five will be the Commonwealth bronze medalist Lewis Clearbert from Capital and Wellington. But in lane four, it is his compatriot, the 16-year-old Sam Brown, who had a blinder this morning just off his New Zealand record. And we can't forget Luan Grobola in lane three, who could be a contender too. The women's 400 metres individual medley, Gina McCarthy is in lane four with a six-second margin over lane five and the rest of the field. The men's 50-metre breaststroke will be an exciting one with Zahn Collins and Josh Gilbert, literally 0.1 of a second separating them this morning in the heats, and everything is going to be on this final tonight, so he can be the fastest. Luan Grobola in lane uh, three this evening with just over 28 seconds. The women's 50 metres breaststroke, Bronna Ryan, she won the 100, she'll be back to defend her title and win that 50, did 31.83 this morning. And both Kira Smith and Kaylee Jackson, just over 32 seconds. We finish tonight's final session with the 4x100 Freestyle Club Relay, which is always an exciting end to the program. So settle in and enjoy the action for the fourth session of the Aon 2020 New Zealand Short Course Championships. Please join me in welcoming our technical officials for this evening's session of the 2020 Aon New Zealand Short Course Championships. Please join me in welcoming our referee for this evening's final session, Christine Casson from Canterbury. And our starter for this evening's session, Alan Hale from Otago. And not on pool deck currently, but our technical director for these champs will be Leslie Huckins. We now invite the technical officials to take their seats. From the schoolyard to the stadium, Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success on a local, regional and national level for over 20 years. We're proud to support New Zealand's sporting organisations and communities up and down the country. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance expert advice and local service. From quote to claim management, we're with you every step of the way. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. Challenge yourself this summer at the Banana Boat Ocean Swim Series. Distances to suit all abilities. And this year hosting the New Zealand Secondary School Champs. So much more than a swim. Enter at oceanswim.co.nz.
Swimming is my favorite way to stop the day. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle. Keeps me moving and keeps me alive. It's the reason I want to be the best one day. It's, it's why, why we're going, going to here. See, see you in Topol. Topol. Well, here we are at Waterworld in Hamilton, session number four of the championships, and I'm uh, pretty excited to be sitting alongside a world record holder who will co-commentate with me tonight, Sophie Pascoe here, uh, fresh off the back of her world record this morning, 50 metres breaststroke, and Sophie, uh, I'm going to hand you the mic, uh, lovely to have you here. Thank you, it's good to be here and this is uh, very new for me, being in the seat of speaking instead of being in the water, but um, it's been an exciting start to the meet um, for myself personally this morning and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what tonight brings, um, especially in the 400 IM tonight. Thanks very much Sophie, it'd be good to get some expert comments from you throughout the evening uh, in some of the shorter events might be a little bit hard to get a word in but uh, certainly get you in there for the 400 IM and, 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 a, and a comment in these 100 freestyles. So um, we're going to get underway now with uh, the first event of this evening's program and that will be event number 9, the men's 100 metre freestyle. Please put your hands together and welcome to the pool deck the C finalists. In lane one from Jazzy Hugo Rathal. In lane two from Pirates Joseph Stewart. Lane three from Neptune Jacob Bloomfield. Lane four from Jazzy Bailey Perriam. Lane five from Evolution Joshua Gilbert. Lane six from uh, Tasman Joshua Ames. Seven from Faranui William Campbell. Lane eight from Faranui Thomas McGibbon. Sophie, they go to the wall at the halfway mark. Uh, what are you looking at? What do you see? Look, um, Joshua's had a great start in lane five. Uh, now, obviously, they're pulling up towards him and coming into that third 25 now, and this is where it's all going to count, who's got the best turn off the wall. So coming off the wall, it is uh, Bailey Perriam, and it was indeed a good turn. Bailey Perriam, but lane eight, it is Thomas McGibbon. Thomas McGibbon in lane eight. Bailey Perriam takes it out, 51.86. Thomas McGibbon in eight is second, and Joseph Stewart rounds out the top three. So Sophie, we talked a little bit about uh, where you're at with your training, and you've got four 50s in these championships, uh, a broken 200 IM, I liked you, how you called that. Um, just a quick comment on, um, you know, what, what, what events you, and what your expectation is for the rest of the 50s. Uh, look, I'm expecting to have a good uh, next three 50s to make it obviously a good overall 200 IM um, as one of my specialties, uh, racing. But uh, the idea was to come here, focus on the four 50s. That's what we train for. And if we can have a good, you know, four of them and make up a good 200 IM time, I think we're looking good and in going into next year. 
Well, a great strategy, and we now move and welcome the B finalists of Event 9, the 100 metres freestyle. In lane one from Jazzy Quinton Hurley, lane two Evolution Tarquin Magna, Capital Swim Clubs Arakura Julian in three, Daniel Hardy in four, Hamilton Aquatics, Matthew Hyde from St Paul's in five, Tom Drever from Whatanui in six, Lachlan O'Connor in seven for Capital and eight Tom Gold from Neptune. They coming up to the 50 pretty flat across there, lane six going well, Tom Drever. Yeah, it's awesome to see Tarquin Magna in here. He's the youngest out of all the 100 metre swimmers in the finals tonight. Uh, so this will be an exciting race for him, being up against these big boys. They go to the 75 metre mark. They all turn together, coming out of that turn. This is going to be anyone's lane three. Atakura Julian from Capital bearing the head. Can he get there? The Capital Swim Club member, Atakura Julian, goes for the wall. He gets there, 50.95. Daniel Hardy in the middle lane getting second. Tom Drever after that great start to the race coming in third. Please welcome to the pool deck the A finalists of Event 9, the men's 100 metres freestyle. In lane one from St. Peter's, Luke Mitchell. In lane two, from St. Peter's, Tyler Tepper. In lane three from St. Paul's, Ben Littlejohn. In lane four from Faranui, Taiko Torepi Ormsby. In lane five from Equablades, Zach Reed. In lane six from Waitaha, jo uh, Christopher Elson. In lane seven from Neptune, Zeke Pine. And lane eight from Evolution, Daniel Shanahan. The 17-year-old in the middle of the pool, Taiko Torepi Ormsby, had a blinder this morning in the heats. He leads them out through the first turn. Taiko Torepi Ormsby, what a talent. Great underwater work too, comes out in front. Half a body length back to Ben Littlejohn. In lane five is Zach Reed, the 800-metre specialist. They've had a great turn here. Zach's catching up. We know he's an 800 specialist, but this 100 is going to be more entertaining if he can take this one out as well. 
They go to the wall. Taiko Torepi Ormsby still holds the lead, but he's got Zach Reed right on his tail. Can he hold on? Zach Reed coming through. Zach Reed with all the endurance. He's going to collect them on the last 10 metres. He does indeed. What a swim from Zach Reed. The New Zealand record holder for 800 metres freestyle has won the 100 metres. I'm not sure how many times that's happened. Taiko Torepi Ormsby in second. Ben Littlejohn in third. Wow, what a swim. We'll chat with Zach Reed shortly. Zach Reed, congratulations. I never thought I'd be shaking your hand for a 100 metres freestyle. Uh, first reactions? Uh, pretty stoked, uh, pretty pumped with the time, so yeah. 49 1 8, fastest you've ever been? Yeah, for sure. I came in going about 50.2, so real happy, yeah. All signs pointing in the right direction at the moment for you. Uh, look, I, I saw the final turn. It's always dangerous when a distance swimmer is right on your heels with one length to go. I actually looked at it and thought, Tycho's going to really have to bury it here. Didn't quite get to the line, so you, you just pulled him back. Must have been a good feeling, sort of feeling that come through. Yeah, I just always always know to attack that last turn and get under that wave and just put my head down and came home. Yeah. Has speed been something you've been working on, or is it, uh, you know, how have you come to, to swim a 49-1? Uh, I think a little bit of gym work. I've done some new stuff in the gym and just put on a little bit of strength over, over that post-lockdown, so, yeah. Well, good man. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you next races. We move now to event 209, the para multi-class final for the men's 100 metres freestyle. Welcome them to the pool deck, ladies and gentlemen. In lane two from Topor, Kuda Tafai. In lane three from the Sun Devils, Lance Dusto. In lane four from Blenheim, Jack Bugler. In lane five from Trojans, Bailey Conlon. In lane six, is Finn, uh, Finn Russ from Nelson South. And lane seven from Geraldine, Benjamin Gould. Away we go, and uh, Lance Dusto coming off the back of a win last night. Uh, Jack Bugler doing a great job as well. Here with Sophie Pascoe on the commentary desk, and uh, a few comments from you, Sophie, on this event. Yeah, this is an exciting race. We've got um, the field, most of them East 14s, and Ben in, uh, in East 10. Jax will be looking to uh, close the gap on the record held by David Beck. So here they've pushed off on the wall into their third 25. Taking a good lead, Jack Bugler. He'll be wanting to push that on the way home. And the other's trying to keep up. 
Nice work, Jack Bugler, in the middle there, lane four from Blenheim. S14 class, which is the intellectual disability class. All five from lane two to six are the intellectual disability. Benjamin Gould in lane seven with the physical disability. Jack Bugler coming in, checks the clock straight away with a time of 59.56, well underneath the 102.14. And David Beck's New Zealand record just outside of that. So 0.3 of a second off that New Zealand record and the S10 record of 59.4. So great swims by all of these gentlemen. And we'll catch a word with uh, Jack Bugler now. Jack, congratulations. Put it there. Under the minute for the 100 freestyle. Is that the first time you've been under a minute? Um, yes. How does that feel? I remember the first time I went under a minute too many years ago, but it's a pretty special feeling. Is, that, is this something you've been aiming for for a long time? Um, yeah, it is. And a win for you tonight. You were miles ahead there. Are you happy with your performances so far? Um, yeah. And what other strokes, other than freestyle, what's your second best stroke? Um, probably breaststroke. Breaststroke. Well, good on you, Jack. Congratulations on another win. I hope to see you here again. Well done. From the schoolyard to the stadium, Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success on a local, regional and national level for over 20 years. We're proud to support New Zealand's sporting organisations and communities up and down the country. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance. Expert advice and local service. From quote to claim management, we're with you every step of the way. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. We now move to event 10, the women's 100 metres freestyle, and this is the C finalists on the pool deck. In lane one from St. Paul's, Kelly Lewis. Lane two from Evolution, Olive Pierce. Lane three from Jazzy, Manaya Butler. Lane four from Aquablades, Claudia Kelly. Lane five from North Canterbury, Holly Rahu Rahu. In lane six from Hamilton Aquatics, Jordan Williams. Lane seven from Aquablades, Sasha Reed. And in lane eight from Mount Monganui, Lily Cooney. Now, in terms of pacing, Sophie, in a 100-metre freestyle, do you go all out from the beginning, or what do you normally do? Look, for me personally, yes, um, just because I don't have the leg drive, but these girls do have that leg drive, so they'll be um, needing to pick up their pace and the kick in this last four, fourth 25. Some nice advice here from Sophie, and we come into the final lap of the sea final for the women's 100-metre freestyle. And a nice uh, lead here in lane seven. I think she's going to take it. Sasha Reed from Aquablades might just get there. She does. 58 47. Holly Rahurahu in second and Claudia Kelly in third.
We now welcome to the pool deck the B finalists of the women's 100 metres freestyle. In lane one, from Jazzy, Hannah Abdo. In lane two, from Kiwi West, Paris Cutler. In lane three, from Faranui, Hannah Bates. Lane four, from Evolution, Talita McEwen. Lane five, from Ashburton, Bree Middleton. Lane six, from Evolution, Caitlin Farrell. Lane seven, from Capital, Brooke Miles. And lane eight, from Evolution, Kira Allett. Now the third 25 of any 100, so important, Sophie, in terms of your third 25, what do you try and concentrate on? Look, this is the lap that's mainly forgotten about and uh, it's where you can drop off, but this is the lap where you need to push it in hard and really hold on in that last fourth 25. And they he head into the final 25 and looking across the field, the lucky lane seven starting to come through again. Lane seven, Brooke Miles from Capital is going to clean up from the outside lane and she comes. And the Capital Swim Club, very excited about that over the other side of the pool. Second place to Talita McEwen and third to Hannah Bates. Now welcome to the pool deck, the A finalists of the women's 100 metres freestyle. In lane one from Neptune, Caitlin Deans. In lane two from Hamilton Aquatics, Paige Flynn. In lane three from Sun Devils, Emma Godwin. In lane four from St. Paul's, Laura Littlejohn. In lane five from Neptune, Erica Fairweather. In lane six from Mount Monganui, Molly Shivnan. In lane seven from Capital, Ruby Heath. And lane eight from St. Peter's, Danielle Joblin. Away we go. New Zealand record holder in the middle of the screen. New Zealand age group record holder. Laura Littlejohn heading out the first 25. You've got uh, Erica Fairweather, the accomplished middle distance distance swimmer on her right hand side. And Emma Godwin, talented backstroker on the left hand side. Now interesting Sophie, you've got all these different swimmers with different disciplines and strokes here. Yeah, it is interesting, but look, it's really great, and it's good to see Erica Fairweather in this as well, obviously being 800 to 100, but, you know, we've seen the likes of Katie Ledecky um, prove to us that being a long distance, and she can still accomplish in a short distance as well. And we're coming into the first 20, last 25, I should say, it's going to be close. It is Emma Godwin, but no, I think it's Erica Fairweather going to come through. Erica Fairweather is going to take this. Erica Fairweather, 54.28. 
Laura Littlejohn just 0.3 of a second out. And Erica Fairweather has broken that New Zealand age group record by 0.01 of a second from this morning. And a bit of a hug and an embrace between those two talented 16-year-olds. Erica Fairweather here with me for the first time this championship. And uh, again, I didn't think it'd be for the 100 freestyle. A New Zealand record, uh, age group record, by 0 1 of a second from uh, Laura Littlejohn this morning. Put it there. Congratulations. Uh, how do you feel about that performance? Oh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted to go faster than this morning, so I'm really happy. Now, I was just talking to Sophie Pasco. She noted you didn't breathe for the last 10 metres of that event. Do you purposely do that coming into the wall? Um, I definitely try to. I think um, it helps me gain speed or maintain the speed I have for the last 10 metres. And that's always helpful. In terms of that speed, um, where do you feel that speed's come from? I mean, we talked to Zach Reed about his speed, but have you been concentrating on that? Um, to be honest, I've been concentrating on turns a lot lately. Um, Obviously, I swim a lot more long course than I do short course, so um, the change is nice and turns are important in short course, so yeah. Congratulations, Erica. Well done. Please welcome to the pool deck, event 210, the women's 100 metre freestyle para multi-class final. In lane two from Hamilton Aquatics, Melissa Donahue. In lane three from Orca, Jane Fox. Lane four from Faranui, Gabriella Smith. In lane five from Faranui, Lily Fox Mason. In lane six from Trojans, Shaborn Terry. And lane seven from Zenith, Katie Short. And away we go, and maybe some records to be broken tonight. Jane Fox taking off fast, almost striking before she hit the water. Away we go down the first 25. The Faranui girls in the middle. And uh, Sophie Pascoe, what are we looking out for in this event? Look, Jane's obviously chasing for that uh, record of hers to get that in lower. And uh, Gabby this morning did a good personal best time, so she'll be going to look to obviously do another personal best tonight. Uh, you can see they're coming up into this third third lap now into the turn. Good push offs, obviously even through the field here. So here we're pushing into that third lap, and they're wanting it, which is good. It's good to see that they're obviously pushing this one. Like we said, I would say it's easy to drop off. So here we come into the fourth. And uh, a nice length there by uh, Lily Fox Mason, just getting an edge on her compatriot Gabriella Smith. And uh, looking out for these times, Jane Fox, a 1.11.68 is the time she needs to meet to beat the New Zealand record. And these two Whānui swimmers hitting the wall now, really up-and-comers. 
and uh, they finish in 109, 109, 94. So Jane Fox outside of her time there, 114, 28, 25. Uh, we've got uh, Shibborn Terry finishing there uh, in uh, 117, which is a lot faster than her morning heat. Katie Short finishing in 128 about the same time, and Melissa Donahue, uh, 133. So congratulations, uh, ladies. Lily, Lily Fox Mason is the winner of that event, the 15-year-old. Lily, big smile there, a win for you, congratulations. That was an awesome swim at 15 years old to win a national title here, you must be wrapped. Yeah, I'm really happy with that race. I was a bit disappointed this morning, but happy with that, yeah. <laughs> Wharanui Club down there, uh, you've got some great swimmers there and uh, some fellow para-athletes to train with, that must make a huge difference. Yeah, it's really helpful, we get lots of help from all the clubs around us and everything, it's awesome, yeah. In terms of uh, titles, is this the first one to your name at a ch national championships? Um, yes, it is first gold at a national championship. So yeah. <laughs> What's coming up for you in these uh, in this meet? What what other events have you got coming up? Um, I'm looking forward to fly, and yeah, and some IM. So yeah. Well, congratulations. Nice to see you. We we'll hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Swimming is my favorite way to start the day. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle. Keeps me moving and keeps me alive. It's the reason I want to be the best one day. It's, it's why, why we're going, going to get it. it. See you in Topol. We move now to event 11, the final of the men's 400 metres individual medley. We start with the C final. In lane one from Pirates, Henry Guy. In lane two from Orca, Jackson Herrick. Lane three from Jazzy, Connor McCulloch. Lane four from Tasman, Jackson Marshall. Lane five from Thomas, uh, lane five from St. Peter's, Thomas Griffin. Lane six from Hamilton Aquatics, Jackson Mihaka. Lane seven from Liz Van Willey Aquatics, Kalani Bruce. And lane eight from Greendale, Caleb Carlisle. So, We've got four lengths of butterfly, then back, breast, and free. And uh, Sophie, this is one of your specialty events. In terms of, uh, well, not the 400, but the 200. Um, but uh, in terms of starting out in this with all four strokes, you know, do you, in your favoured stroke, would you, would you give that the most effort or the least effort to conserve for the other strokes? Look, it's really dependent on what the favoured stroke is. Uh, mine is obviously fly, so I do need to be able to pull up against my other competitors um, with the upper body strength that I have, because obviously breaststroke being in the middle um, is a leg dominant stroke. So these boys here in this race, um, you can see that they, we have, they're going out fast in the backstroke uh, now. Um, but they'll pull up in the breaststroke, and I say it will be 
will be looking at more of an even field. And they have the leeway to be able to do that being a 400. But the turns are really crucial. Um, and an IM of two, either 200 or 400. And uh, that's where we'll see, you know, who will get the gold, silver and bronze. Talked a lot this morning about turns and the fact that there are a number of differences between turning in an IM event and turning in an individual event. For example, breaststroke or the, the change. Um, how much in practice uh, is turning and, and touching the wall a part of training? It's huge. Uh, look, it's a massive skill factor that you need to be able to have on race day and, and go work to your benefit. And Christchurch, we're very limited, obviously, with the amount of 50 metre pools that we have. So we're actually made to focus on turns and dives. And um, I've actually seen here a majority of our um, Canterbury, Can- Canterbury athletes have been proving that their turns are, um, are going really well. And a, and a 50, obviously, less turns. But the 400 IM here, we can see that they're going to have to be fast off those turns. And that's where that point one of a second counts. Joined by Sophie Pascoe, world record holder, multiple Paralympic gold medalist here, uh, commentating with me this evening. And we are watching the C final of the men's 400 metre individual medley. And at the moment in lane five, we have Thomas Griffin from St. Peter's. And in lane four, it is Jackson Marshall in second. Lane, uh, third is lane six, uh, Jackson Mihaka. And they turn into the second 50 of their breaststroke leg. Yeah, so here we can see that, uh, as I said before, the field's closing up on Thomas. Um, the breaststroke is going to dictate how they go into that 100 freestyle, and it will be a sprint to the, into that last 50. And this is where they need to stay strong in this last fourth 25 of the breaststroke because they're coming into the freestyle where majority of the um, majority of the race field here will. Uh, you know, gang up on each other to see who can finish on the wall first. I always think if you could get the advantage in the breaststroke that you can tear away in the freestyle and just increase that margin. And that's what's going to happen here with uh, Thomas Griffin. He's going to get into the freestyle before anyone else and increase that margin. And at the moment, he's got about a three second lead over the rest of the field. And now into the freestyle, these swimmers are fatigued, Sophie. Um, How much has it come down to sort of technique and pure grit? (laughs) Look, I don't race 400 IM, so I'm definitely not envious of these boys at all. But uh, look, you you can definitely tell when they start to tighten up. And as we can see here, Thomas is coming into this turn now. And uh, he was, he, he's tightening up, um, but it's about holding on and, and just, yeah, pure grit in that last 25 for sure. As so we come down to the final 25 of this 400 IM C final uh, event number 11. And a nice finish here from Thomas Griffin. He was in the second fastest position, but he's taken this C final quite easily. And his time of 4.46 in the heats, he will touch at 4.40.55. You do wonder whether there was something left in the tank from this morning. And uh, Jackson Marshall will come in second and Jackson Mihaka uh, into third. We welcome to the pool deck now the B finalists of the men's 400 metres individual medley.
the B final of the men's 400 metres individual medley in lane one from Capital Alessandra Esposito, lane two from Tasman Alex Swan, lane three from Jazzy Oliver Heaton, lane four from Wanaka Benjamin Silipo, lane five from Trojans Michael Lansdowne, lane six from Rotorua David Bowles, lane seven from Capital Curtis Malsop, and lane eight from Pirates Finn Harland. And they go through the first 50 of the 100 metres butterfly. It's Oliver Heaton from lane three. And uh, going quickly in the outside lane, Curtis Melsop. And lane eight, Finn Harlan through. And uh, Sophie, we were chatting about just that focus before the event uh, starts and how you need to shut everyone out and just sort of spend that time to consider your race and get in the zone. Uh, in terms of that, how important is it and what do you do before your race is... Yeah, I think everyone can agree with me that uh, nerves come before every race and uh, I've actually trained myself to believe that those nerves are a good thing. So if, I don't act, if I'm not actually nervous, then I'm not ready to race. Uh, it's a pretty powerful step because if uh, you, the nerves take control of you, then obviously you can go the other way as well. Um, but look, I, I use music. Um, I see the majority of us here using music as well to get ourselves um, hyped up for the race ahead. But yeah, the focus is so crucial because obviously everyone is really and physically fit, ready to go and race. Um, and if you can break someone mentally, then you're left with only six, ra six people um, to obviously uh, win the gold against. So uh, it's hugely important. And I think these guys here are learning off that through their older peers. And you can see the difference between that younger bracket going through. So if you can ingrain that into them at such a young age that you know, the focus is so important before racing, uh, yeah, we'll, you'll definitely see the results come through. Some great insights there from Sophie Pascoe. And we are coming up uh, nearing the halfway mark for this 400 metre individual medley for men, the B final. And uh, leading the way at the moment is lane six, David Bowles from Rotorua. And he comes into the breaststroke leg. He did a time this morning of 4.43.27. And across in lane three, that is uh, Oliver Heaton who led out in the butterfly leg and a few changes of lead at the moment. And these swimmers, uh, obviously, we talked to... Uh, we talked to uh, swimmers earlier in the meet about sort of the, the difference between the 200 and the 400 and boy, oh boy, uh, there is a huge difference in terms of that endurance level and that intensity at that 400 level and, and all four strokes being swum is definitely going to expend some serious energy. Sophie, uh, starting to come up to a bit of a flat line here. Yeah, it's really exciting to see and I, we can see that coming because they're shortening up on their pullouts, <laughs> which uh, is definitely going to prove that the others who are obviously stronger in the breaststroke will catch up. But this is going to lead to an exciting 100 freestyle because essentially it's going to come down to who's the better freestyler over the 100. Coming into the final stages of the breaststroke. And they head into the freestyle leg pretty even. And in lane five, it is Michael Lansdowne from Wanaka. But uh, I think looking pretty strong is uh, Benjamin Silipo. Sorry, Benjamin Silipo from Wanaka, I should say. It was uh, Michael Lansdowne from Trojans. And Ben Silipo has had a great meet so far. Training down in that beautiful part of the country, Wanaka. And uh, he's going to be hard to beat here. He goes into his final 50. In terms of looking around at other swimmers, Sophie, you know, is this what happens at this point? Is there any point looking at other swimmers? I think right next to you, yes, in a way. Um, but you are focused on your own race. You know, you've got to treat your black line as, you know, there's two curtains beside you, but... Sometimes when you do see a little kick or a little side swipe of the old hand, then that's when you've got to really dig in deep as well. These boys are starting to breathe every second stroke now. It's going to hurt this last 50. And they touch, and it is uh, Ben Silipo who takes it out, 4.36, which is faster than his heat time. He'll be happy with that. And David Bowles, great swim by David Bowles there to take out uh, second, well underneath his seed time. So some good swims there in the B final.
please welcome to the pool deck the A finalists of the men's 400 metres individual medley. In lane one from Jazzy, Quinton Hurley. In lane two from Pirates, Joseph Stewart. In lane three from Tower, Bronson Lloyd. In lane four from Capital, Sam Brown. In lane five from Capital, Lewis Clearbert. In lane six from Kiwi West, Luan Grobola. In lane seven from Evolution, Thomas Wilkinson. And lane eight from St. Peter's, Luke Mitchell. Well, 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 what a stack field this one is. It's going to be an exciting one, Hamilton. And away we go, early stages. Powering into the first 25, nothing in it. No surprises there, too early to tell. But lane five, Lewis Clearbert already showing signs of taking the lead. Lewis Clearbert certainly conserves some energy this morning. And Sophie, you said you're excited about this one. Let's talk about that. I am. Um, look, I went to Com Games with Lewis, and uh, this is obviously one of his best races. And it's really exciting to see the likes of Lou take uh, the lead, but also show real class in his uh, turns and uh, his streamlines underwater. That's so crucial in a race like this because that's obviously where you can gain that 0.1 of a second ahead of, across the field. We head through the first hundred. We look at the split for Lewis Clearbert, um, 57-37. He's got one and a half seconds lead over the rest of the field. And uh, we'll be looking at Dean Kent's 2003 national record of 4.06, which he did in Germany uh, back in that January. So uh, Dean Kent potentially watching on from Auckland. Uh, can his record stay intact? Who knows? We'll see as this race unfolds. This is really good for Lewis. Obviously, he's heading away uh, this weekend to Hungary for the ISL uh, swim meet. So to, for him to have a good race heading, before heading away really sets him up nicely for, the rest, for swimming with the ISL teams. Sam Brown here is also sitting on his hip. He also holds the 16-year-old national record as well, so exciting to see, obviously, a 16-year-old um, up against a teammate here, Lewis, um, which is really cool, obviously, as well, to have friendships as well as a really good club capital trained by Gary. Lewis is now putting the pressure on in the breaststroke, and he will over this next 25 as well to make sure he's got quite a big lead over uh, Sam and the rest of the boys. Quinton Hurley in lane one has also just swam 100 freestyle, so to come into the 400, free, 400 IM after 100 freestyle is a big challenge tonight for him. Second 50 of the breaststroke leg for Lewis Clearbert. You can see on his face the amount of uh, energy he's putting into this. He's definitely hunting for a record here, I'm sure. Sam Brown, his 17-year-old, 16-year-old compatriot from Capital Swim Club going very well in second. And in third at the moment, Luan Grobola coming up in that breaststroke leg. Bronson Lloyd, the 17-year-old, over in three. They turn for home. We look at the split. 3-10-59. He's going to have to go very, very fast to 56 to get that record. I'm not sure. We'll see.
And uh, Joseph Stewart from Pirates got the added challenge of uh, not having hearing, so that makes it uh, that much more challenging, I guess, before the start. But we look back to the race. Lewis Clairbert, 40 metres left to swim. It's getting really close now on that record. Sam Brown, can we get him through to 4.17.12? Clairbert's got the title sewn up. We're going to watch for that time. Four minutes, 4.01, 4.02, 4.03. I think he's going to be just outside. He touches. What a swim there for Lewis Clairbert. 4.07.47. We look at the time. It's a new New Zealand age group record for Sam Brown. 4.14. Look at his face. Absolutely wrapped. Sam Brown in absolute disbelief at 4.14. And Luan Grobola, a good time to it. 4.17. But the winner... The title holder, Lewis Clairbert, and no doubt one of the fastest times, if not the fastest time he's ever done short course. We'll talk to him shortly. We'll also talk to Sam as well. We'll have a chat to Sam about his uh, New Zealand age group record. Lewis Clebert, congratulations. Uh, another national title for you, 407. Uh, comments? Oh, didn't realise how hard 16 laps was, eh? Far out, forgot. <laughs> 407, you look the business from the beginning, you're putting the full effort in, you are obviously leaving a little bit of energy in the tank from this morning from the heats. But 407, uh, is this the fastest time you've ever done in a short course pool? Um, it's probably the second time I've probably or properly done it in a short course pool, so still learning how to uh, turn fast and sort of get that speed. So definitely got a little bit of work to do, but um, yeah, pretty happy with that time. I looked at the uh, turning at the breaststroke you had to do 56 seconds in that final 100 to break Dean Kent's 17-year-old New Zealand record. In terms of that record, was it even in your mind? Um, do you, did, you, did you know about that record? Yeah, definitely had a quick, quick peek at it. Um, it's a pretty old, old record that I thought... Might, might have been time to go, but um, obviously Dean, Dean had put a pretty good swim forward back in 2003, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that it's still standing, but um, yeah, maybe next time I have to go for it again. Well, Dean Kent will be watching at home. Uh, it's still intact, Dino. So well done, Lewis. Congratulations on the national title. We're going to get a, uh, a quick word with Sam Brown. A superb performance. Put it there, Sam. Um, 16 years old. 4.14, I looked on your face as you finished. Uh, you were sort of wow in disbelief at the, at the time. So uh, you blown away by that? Oh, yeah, like, had no idea I could go 14. I was going to go for, like, a try to PB under 17 and a 14. Wow, it's unbelievable. I'm so stoked. What do you put that down to? 4.18 this morning, four seconds. I mean, were you giving it everything this morning? Yeah, I was. Then I had a Lewis race. That was good. A little bit of competition little smack talk before which is good as well but yeah well a New Zealand record for you congratulations Sam and sets you up with a, a wonderful rest of the meet well done thank you Challenge yourself this summer at the Banana Boat Ocean Swim Series. Distances to suit all abilities. And this year hosting the New Zealand Secondary School Champs. So much more than a swim. Enter at oceanswim.co.nz Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success for over 20 years. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance. Expert advice and local service. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. We move to event 12. 
the women's 400 metres individual medley finals and just about to jump on the block is the C finalists. In lane one from Stratford, Eva McGoach, McGeech. Uh, lane two from Jazzy, Jade Vesti. Lane three from Orca, Rihanna Short. In lane four from Bream Bay, Amelia Finer. Lane five from Pirates, Lucy Borlas. Lane six from Liz Van Wheelie, Sarah Cummings. Lane seven from Tasman, Samantha Wilson. And lane eight from Rotorua, Annalise Cowie. The C finalists of the women's 400 metres individual medley. And a nice start in lane seven by Samantha Wilson from Tasman in the first 50. Now, you spoke about butterfly being your best stroke, Sophie. Had that been the case your whole career? Did it start that way? Did it mould into that? Uh, not really. Look, um, obviously, you do so many lengths of freestyle. Uh, but it came to me really in the first Paralympic Games in 2008 for me. And... Uh, it was actually the first race up, and I 15 silver medal, and that's when I thought, right, I'm good at fly. <laughs> so uh, fly then just became really a stroke that we really worked on as well, just being so obviously upper body dominant. Um, obviously, with, for the 200 IM, it really made such a difference to be able to have that hold against everybody else in the fly because I knew everyone would be able to catch up to me having the legs uh, and the breaststroke. Well, butterfly is such a beautiful stroke to watch when, uh, when done so well. And we're now into the backstroke leg, and uh, we've got a change of lead in lane two. This is uh, Jade Vesti from Jazzy, and uh, still holding into a place is lane seven's Samantha Wilson in lane seven. Lane four going well, a media finer. But so looking comfortable out there with a slowly but surely sort of stroke um, pace. Uh, must be doing some really good work underwater here. And let's talk about that, Sophie, in terms of rating versus, you've got all these different swimmers with different ratings. So let's talk about rating. Rating's a huge one. Uh, look, for someone like myself, uh, I have to have a higher rating than uh, the, the person next to me who may have two legs just because obviously they have the lead dominance to be able to have a slower rating and more hold on the water. But even though saying I have to have a high rating, you must have that catch with the water and that's so important, that skill factor and making sure you can get that um, catch in training that can obviously replicate to race day as well. Um, the girls here, you know, you'll see their rating in the freestyle pick up and you should technically and skillfully pick that up over those 425s. And uh, looking at the C final here and how we're all going, it is still Jade Vesti that leads through in the breaststroke leg. Uh, lane seven, Samantha Wilson hanging in there doing well in the outside lane. And lane one going well. Eva McGeech is going well. And uh, also lane three coming through, Rihanna Short in the breaststroke. We've talked about dry land a few times, Sophie, and how important dry land is. How much... Uh, is it uh, a part of your training? It's a massive part now, but it's also changed over the years. Uh, you know, I've, I've built up a huge base in, in the water, but also on, on land as well. So now, very much I still need to balance that out. I can't be too heavy, um, you know, too muscular, to, because it's just not going to be vital for me in the shorter distances. I'm going to be too heavy holding that. So now we've changed it up with um, enjoyable other options like yoga, um, you know, which is awesome for the flexibility, which is what we need in swimming. Uh, rock climbing and boxing, uh, hit squad, you know, it's just things that also are enjoyable outside the water rather than looking at a black line. Good stuff. It, it is, uh, it's important to keep it interesting, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, we're doing these swimmers swimming for, for the enjoyment as well as the challenge and the achievement. And we're moving into the freestyle lead now in a complete change of lead. This is uh, Rihanna Short, who has taken the lead now. And in lane five, Lucy Borlas has come through. And so often we see in these 400 IMs that the swimmers that lead out the first 200 aren't the swimmers there at the end. Not always, 
but uh, it is about those, is it the butterfly backstroke combo that's strong and then the breaststroke freestyle? Who knows? But we go through to the final 50 of the C final and it is uh, Rihanna Short in control. Uh, anyone's for second and third at the moment. Lots of vocal support in the grandstands for these swimmers. And a very, very tough event indeed. 400 individual medley. Many swimmers in their career will never have done one. And uh, just like the Tour a Butterfly, I guess, it's one of those events which you seem to dodge if you don't like them. But the people that do like them uh, are generally pretty talented at them. And here we go down to the line. It is uh, Rihanna Short that wins it. Well done to her. 5.13, which is well underneath. Five seconds, in fact, underneath her heat time. We welcome to the pool deck the B finalists of the women's 400 metres individual medley. Lane one is uh, Alice, Alicia Wong from Pirates. In lane three, we'll come back to lane two. Lane three is Capitals' Jenna Ralston Larking. Lane four, Maddie Horton from Jazzy. Lane five from Kira Smith. Uh, lane five, Kira Smith from North Wave. Lane six from Ashburton, Hannah King. Lane seven from Evolution, Zoe Wilkinson. Lane eight from Fakatane Ashley Lawler. And in lane two, Mia A A Adams from Raumati. So a nice start here from Jenna Ralston Larkin Capital. We talked about uh, Sophie, the strength of Capital and how how much of an impact that must have on the, the culture, the camaraderie, the performance of those swimmers. Um, what, what do you think of, you know, how important that team is? Oh, team's an, an, an important part of uh, swimming. You know, that's where we gain the friendships and the rivalries, but it's also uh, they get you through the training sessions when it is pretty hard and you can rely on one another that you know that you're going through the exact same thing and, and push one another to be better. Um, you know, Gary's got a great club down there going... Um, especially you can see obviously in the, the IMs here, Capital leading and leading strong. Uh, but you know, the likes of seeing Sam and Lewis at the end having a great friendship and, and supporting one another. Um, but it's also good that they're, you know, chasing one another as well. And a nice lead forming here for Jenna Ralston Larking from Capital and second Maddie Horton from Jazzy. Kara Smith is in third. She'll turn in the breaststroke leg and uh, being a breaststroker, well, no, not quite, but when she does, she will uh, start to push that stroke, being a number one stroke. And uh, just briefly talking to uh, Dean Kent, uh, he said he watched uh, that 400 IM. He said he congratulates uh, Lewis and Sam and uh, tells Lewis to hurry up and get that record next time. So that's very nice of the current... New Zealand record holder, now the head of swimming at Northern Arena up in Silverdale, uh, and now a, uh, a family man, but still a lover of swimming, so much a part of his life. 
uh, Dean Kent and of course his uh, younger brother Stephen also an Olympian and uh, his very talented other brothers David and Andy uh, behind me uh, part of Swimming New Zealand back to the event now Jenna Ralston Larking still in control but that lead is reducing uh, this stage of the 400 IM uh, the breaststroke so important even for the swimmers that aren't as talented they've got to really push as hard as they possibly can to to keep that uh, keep that position and uh, they turn now to the second 50 in the breaststroke leg And Kira Smith uh, really starting to claw back that deficit now. And Roly Crichton, your coach, been your coach for what, since day dot? Um, you know, must be like... Uh, I guess just such a close relationship. Absolutely. Um, look, 19 years we've been together and going into our 20th next year. Um, 20 must be a good number with obviously 2020 being postponed and 20 years with roll next year. So an exciting uh, time. But yeah, uh, we know each other. Look, inside and out we can come to the pool and uh, we have that close relationship that we're able to be open and honest with one another. But we both want the same goal and the same dream. So that's why we work. That's why we get the results that we get. Um, you know, there's nothing, no one better than someone who you grow up with and and learn with over time. So his knowledge has definitely, obviously, impacted me um, to be able to achieve in the pool. Well, this is interesting. Back to the racing. Kira Smith has taken the lead. She, I'm sure, she was disappointed with that swim this morning, but she is making up for it tonight. Kira Smith coming through in this 400 individual medley B final and is going to win it tonight. Kira Smith, a 5.07 this morning. She's going to blow that away. 4.57.87, 10 seconds faster this evening. Jenna Ralston Larking, 5.01.47. Also well, way faster than this morning. So some good performances here. So great swims there. And Kira Smith, not sure what's going on with that result, but she clearly won that event. We'll move now and welcome all of the finalists, the A finalists of the women's 400 metres individual medley to the pool deck. Lane one from Kiwi, Madison Wills. In lane two from Evolution is Talita McEwen. In lane three from Capital, Nikki Chapman. In lane four from Hamilton Aquatics, Gina McCarthy. In lane five from Mount Monganui, Zylika Pratt Smith. In lane six from Capital, Sophie Irving. In lane seven from Jazzy, Hannah Abdo. And lane eight from Capital, Molly Player.
the A final of the women's 400 metres individual medley. And just before we kick this off, there's been a disqualification. Event 12, heat uh, the B final, lane 5. And so leading through the first 50 is Gina McCarthy. A notable uh, omission from this event is Helena Gasson. And uh, she's up in Auckland, but off to the ISL, the International Swimming League, over in Europe. And so Gina McCarthy would have had a good battle on with Helena Gasson today. But today she battles the rest of the swimmers in the field. Zalika so Pratt-Smith and Nikki Chapman either side of her. And uh, she's going to have a challenge on her hands here. She's going to have to push it all the way. 4.44 this morning. Some younger swimmers in this field. And how much, uh, Sophie, how much an advantage is it, uh, you know, 14-year-olds versus 23-year-old uh, Nikki Chapman? You know, as you grew through those years, what did you find between sort of the years of 14 and 20? Look, it's definitely the phase of uh, the swimming career where you can obviously go in fearless and uh, achieve what you want to achieve. But look, the ages, it's not really a factor when you're getting into this, the likes of the 14 to 20, 23, sort of even my age now, because it comes down to skill and experience. And if you've got that experience over the others and you use it against them, that's where you will prove you know, that you are the strongest in the field. Uh, it's happening in my racing now. You know, I've, I've got the young ones coming through and, and they are very good and they're going to get only better. But, you know, if I'm still, you know, working hard on the experience and the skill factors in the training and the racing, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still hopefully win. <laughs> nice work. And back to the racing lane for Gina McCarthy cruises in to the breaststroke leg now she leads by three seconds over Zylika Pratt-Smith and uh, two, two years separating those two swimmers in lane four and five. Nikki Chapman the 23 year old in lane three for Capital and I guess uh, Sophie one of the key things you get as you grow older in any part of life is confidence uh, you, you just tend to get more confidence as you grow older, you can handle situations potentially a little bit better. And so I think that's another thing to consider. Certainly as the pressure mounts, uh, that, that's something to consider. And we go back into the second 50 of the breaststroke. Gina McCarthy now increasing her lead and looking back to third at the moment. It looks to be Nikki Chapman in three. And not far behind it is uh, Sophie Irving in lane six. So this uh, ISL, quickly, Sophie, uh, the International Swimming League, um, pretty hard to get there, but uh, I guess these swimmers are finding that this is the international experience they need. Yeah, obviously with the disruption of this year, um, I think it's great that Lewis and Helena are heading over. You know, it's a way for them to get back onto the international scene leading into next year, um, Tokyo. But look, it's exciting for the athletes. I mean, it's exciting to even be here and have a meet, you know, for Swimming New Zealand to put this on with everything that's been happening, obviously, within our own country. Um, I think we're just all grateful that we are able to swim here and have some racing because, obviously, we, we, we're we all sort of um, in a bit of an uncertainty right now. So to have a bit of certainty to obviously focus on swimming at these events, yeah. But the ISL, obviously, over in Hungary, um, six weeks of it, uh, I think it'll be really exciting for Lewis and Helena to get some, some of that international experience leading into nationals next year especially. Well, Gina McCarthy is into the final 50 of her 400 IM and not going to be challenged tonight. Let's see what sort of time she can come out with. 4.44 this morning. She's had to do this on her own for the last 200. And in lane five, Zylika Pratt-Smith, the 16-year-old from Mount Monganui, will look to get the silver. And it is Nikki Chapman in third. Well done to Gina McCarthy, 4.42.81. And two-second uh, improvement from this morning's heats. 
And looking at the other times there, 4.51, all about on par with their times. Uh, Nikki Chapman, 4.55, so slightly underneath that. Well done, ladies. That was the A final of the women's 400 metres individual medley. We'll chat with Gina McCarthy shortly. Congratulations, Gina. Still huffing and puffing. That's a tough event, the 400 IM. How do you feel after that one? Pretty exhausted, yeah. I can imagine. Look, I saw you beforehand. You're on the shoe phone. Uh, who were you calling? Um, I don't know. I was just calling everyone, letting them know that I was going to see a good race. Always love seeing that beforehand. Helena Gasson over going to the ISL. Um, you were on your own for the last 200. Uh, had to do it all on your own. Uh, how much of a difference would it have made, will it make, having Helena Gasson alongside you, uh, challenging you? A ton, yeah. It's always awesome when you can have someone next to you pushing you along. I, I think whenever that's the case, both swimmers or however many swimmers, they really all produce really good times. So it would have been awesome if she was able to come along, but of course she's going away, so that wasn't possible. And 4.42, are you pleased with that performance? Definitely, yeah. I haven't been doing too much IM training, so I'm definitely super happy with that time. Congratulations. Well done, Gina. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder about the medal ceremony, which uh, the medal ceremonies, which are going to start very shortly. So uh, if uh, team managers can uh, ask all of their swimmers to exit the warm-up pool and make their way over if they are, uh, accepting a gold, silver or bronze medal. Medal ceremony is next. From the schoolyard to the stadium, Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success on a local, regional and national level for over 20 years. We're proud to support New Zealand's sporting organisations and communities up and down the country. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance, with expert advice and local service. From quote to claim management, we're with you every step of the way. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. Challenge yourself this summer at the Banana Boat Ocean Swim Series. Distances to suit all abilities. And this year hosting the New Zealand Secondary School Champs. So much more than a swim. Enter at oceanswim.co.nz. Swimming is my favourite way to start the day. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle. Keeps me moving and keeps me alive. It's the reason I want to be the best one day. It's, it's why, why we're going, going to Epic. See, See you in Topol. Topol. Move now to the first of the medal ceremonies of session number four. And presenting the medals at this medal ceremony is legend of para swimming Sophie Pascoe, the world record holder from this morning's session. She'll be presenting the medals alongside Andy Kent, 
looking wonderful there with the medals as well. We'll start with uh, event number nine, the 100 metres freestyle for men. The bronze medalist in 49.86 from St Paul's, Ben Littlejohn. The silver medalist in 49.46 from Faranui, Taiko Torepi Ormsby. And winning in a time of 49.18 from Aquablades, Zach Reed. Move now to event 209, the medal ceremony for the 100 metre freestyle para multi class. In third place in 105.49 from Heratonga Sun Devils, Lance Dusto. In silver medal position in 103.74 from Topo Swimming Club, Bailey Conlon. And winning in 59.56 from Blenheim Swimming Club, Jack Pugler. Move to event 10 now, the medal ceremony for the women's 100 metres freestyle. The third place getter in 54.69, winning the bronze medal from Hiratonga Sun Devils, Emma Godwin. The silver medal position in 54.54 from St Paul's, Laura Littlejohn. And winning in a new New Zealand age group record time of 54.28 from Neptune, Erica Fairweather. Move now to event 210, the women's 100 metres freestyle para multi-class. In third place in 114.25 from Orca, Jane Fox. In the silver medal position from Faranui, Gabriella Smith, 109.94. And winning in 109.15 from Faranui, Lily Fox Mason. Moving now to event 11, the men's 400 metres individual medley final. And in third place in 4.17.15 from Kiwi West Aquatics, Luan Grobola. In second place in a new 16-year-old New Zealand age group record time of 4.14.87, Sam Brown from Capital. And winning the event in 4.07.47, from Capital, Lewis Clearbert. And event number 12, the 400 metre individual medley for women. The final results and medal ceremony in third place in 455.48, Nikki Chapman from Capital. Second place, silver medalist, 451.13 from Mount Monganui Swimming Club, Zileka Pratt-Smith. And winning the event in 442.81 from Hamilton Aquatics, Gina McCarthy.
Now, Team Line are up at the end of the grandstand, and they've got a full range of the latest swimsuits, swim accessories, and goggles. If your swimsuit's getting a little bit tired, you've seen a swimsuit you like and you want to check it out, go and see the team at Team Line at the far end of the grandstand. The very popular rugby shirts that have sold out here in the centre will be reprinted and put online. You can head to teamline.co.nz or scan the QR code at the top of the grandstand. From the schoolyard to the stadium, Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success on a local, regional and national level for over 20 years. We're proud to support New Zealand's sporting organisations and communities up and down the country. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance, expert advice and local service. From quote to claim management, we're with you every step of the way. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. And we're going to get back underway shortly. Sophie, though, we were talking about um, your career, and it's been going on a long time and very, very successful indeed. You're 27 years young now. You've probably got, what, another 20 years to go, is that right? <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, it has been going on a while, and uh, the experience is getting me through these next few years, and uh, look, the love of it as well. So um, I don't know how much longer I will be going for, but the ultimate goal at this stage, like m most of these other swimmers here, is uh, Tokyo 2021. Yeah, well, not wanting to look too far ahead into the future. That's a good move. And uh, we're going to kick off racing again now, Sophie. Event number 13, the 50 metres breaststroke for men. We welcome the C finalists to the floor. In lane one from Danny Burke, Finn Lyon. In lane two from Liz Van Wille Aquatics, Kalani Bruce. Lane three from St. Peter's, Caleb Thomas. Four, Maharo Jones from Sun Devils. Five, Oliver Dool Dooley from Aquablades. Zach Reader from Evolution in six. Tom Gold from Neptune in seven. Bailey Perriam from Jazzy in eight. Pretty flat across the field. I think it's lane three just sneaking uh, some fingernails in front. Caleb Thomas. I think Caleb Torres is going to take it out. Lane one doing well too. That's Finn Lyon. And Caleb Thomas, Oliver Dooley and Maharo Jones taking it out. Welcoming to the pool deck now the B finalists of the men's 50 metres breaststroke.
In lane one, Archie Perriam. In lane two, Max Gardner. In lane three, Thomas Bain. In lane four, Jack Keeper. Lane five, William Campbell. Lane six, Robin Shen. Lane seven, Carlos Hardy. And lane eight, Matthew Sexton. They go to the first 25. And coming back strongly, it is uh, William Campbell. William Campbell looking strong. He's powering through William Campbell. A whole lot of experience there at 25 years old. Well, we 29.87. Sophie, these times versus this morning, how are we looking? Yeah, faster than this morning, which is obviously crucial at a meet like this. We've got to go, we've got to always swim faster at night. So good stuff, boys. So William Campbell going at least half a second faster. He looked the business all the way down. And uh, the veteran, I think I'll call him at 25, is that fair? 25, the veteran, William Campbell, uh, doing a great job there. Sophie's saying, if he's a veteran, what am I? Well, let's move on to the A final of the men's 50 metres breaststroke. In lane one from St. Peter's, William Krofsky. In lane two from Faranui, Flynn McDonald. In lane three from Kiwi West, Luan Grobola. In lane four from Aquablades, Zahn Collins. In lane five from Evolution, Joshua Gilbert. In lane six from Hamilton Aquatics, Daniel Hardy. In lane seven from Faranui, Tom Drever. And lane eight from Evolution, Connor Farrell. Well, all the action's going to be in the middle of the pool. The middle three lanes, only half a second separating them from the heats. A very good start there by Joshua Gilbert in lane five. I think he's going to have the advantage through the 25. He does. Point one of a second, he takes them through the 25. Nice pull out and still Joshua Gilbert in charge. But challenge is coming now from Zahn Collins, the 100-metre breaststroke champion. I think it's going to be Joshua Gilbert, though. Joshua Gilbert wins it, 27.8. Both swimmers going under 28, 27.93, 28.29 for Luan Grobola. All swimmers going faster than this morning. What a great final there. Sophie, any reaction from you? Oh, it was just great to watch. Love a good splash and dash. It was indeed. And so Joshua Gilbert getting one up on his uh, competitor, Zahn Collins. And we'll chat to Joshua Gilbert now. Joshua Gilbert here, put it there, what a win. Under the 28 mark, is that the first time under 28? Yes, first time under 28. Must be good to see a 7 in that number in a 50 breaststroke, sure. Yeah, no, it feels pretty good. Now that was a, a very, very close race, and I think what won it for you was your, your dive, your breakout, you were already in front by the same margin you won within the first uh, 15 metres. Yeah, um, I focus on my dives a lot, so I'm pretty happy with that. And definitely the turn. Could you see uh, your competitors at the turn? Could you see how close they were? Yeah, I had a sneaky look and I was in front, so, yeah. In terms of that last 12 and a half metres with breaststroke, you know, it's a balance between slipping the stroke, uh, trying to go over, overpace it. You know, what was your, what was your sort of uh, in your mind in that final 12 and a half? 
Uh, yeah, just uh, don't let my stroke slip and keep my head down into the wall. Will it work 27 8? What a time. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Swimming is my favourite way to start the day. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle. Keeps me moving and keeps me alive. It's the reason I want to be the best one day. It's why we're going to eat. See you in Topo. Women's 50 metres breaststroke, and just standing next to the blocks is the C finalists. In lane one from St. Peter's, Emma Maltzhead. Lane two from Nelson South, Lily Hall. Lanes three from Aqua Gym, Sienna McEwen. Lane four from Jazzy, Lucy Gordon. Lane five, Jodisha Kirkpatrick from Comet. Six is uh, Sarah Wilson from St. Peter's. Caitlin Jenkins from Central Hawks Bay in seven. And Madeline Whittam from North Wave in eight. And leading the way at the moment is uh, Lucy Gordon in lane four. She's got a good lead at the moment, and she's not going to be caught either. She goes to the wall. Lucy Gordon, 34.09, which is half a second faster than this morning. So that's a great performance. And Jadisha Kirkpatrick, the 14-year-old, coming in second, just a tad over her time from this morning. So good performance there in the C final. Sophie Pascoe joining me in commentary this evening and some nice uh, insights and some interesting comments coming from the champion as we welcome in the B finalists for, for the 50 metre breaststroke for women. Quiet, please. Quiet in the stadium, thank you. Quiet for the start. In lane one is Nikki Clulo from Aqua Gym. Lane two uh, from Tasman, Rebecca Loach. Lane three from St Paul's, Emma Parsons. Lane four, Hannah Morgan from St Paul's. Lane five from Nelson South, Bree Anderson. Lane six, Riley Britton from St. Peter's. Cassandra Taylor's in seven from North Canterbury. And Madison Wills from Kiwi in eight. Very, very close here with 12 and a half metres to swim. I think it might be lane two, Rebecca Loach. Rebecca Loach or Hannah Morgan coming through. Hannah Morgan in lane four. Hannah Morgan comes through just in the last five to seven metres. 34-1-5 exactly the same as she did this morning she must know that rating and 34.41 second place goes to lane two Rebecca Loach who did a great job out there in lane two and third was lane five
please welcome to the pool deck the A finalists of the women's 50 metres breaststroke. In lane one, from Tawa, Amy Teekman. In lane two, from Faranui, Hannah Bates. In lane three, from Northwave, Kira Smith. In lane four, from Porirua, Bronna Ryan. In lane five, from Jazzy, Kaylee Jackson. In lane six, from Mount Monganui, Zylika Pratt-Smith. In lane seven from Romati, Tori Grout. In lane eight from Capital, Jade Morrison. Bronna Ryan, the 27-year-old in the middle of the pool. 31.83 this morning, half a second margin over her lane three and five. But she hasn't had the best start, and lane five's got the best start. Kaylee Jackson, but they turn pretty evenly at the 25 mark. But I think that underwater work is very, very good from Kaylee Jackson. Kaylee Jackson leads it with 10 metres to swim. Kaylee Jackson's hunting for the win. She's going to get there too. What a win for Kaylee Jackson. 31-46. Where did that come from? Bronna Ryan slips into third. Kiera Smith, after the disappointing disqualification, comes back for second. But a great win there for Kaylee Jackson. Congratulations, Kaylee. A title for you. How does that feel? Yeah, pretty good. It's been a while since I've come away with a title in breaststroke, so pretty stoked with a PB as well. You put it all together right from the dive and the breakout. You had the advantage right from the beginning and again at the 25. A really good uh, push off and uh, pull out. Um, you know, is that something you've worked on recently? I mean, it, it really looked like you had the whole thing put together really nicely. Yeah, uh, Pete and I have been working really hard on stroke rate and first couple of strokes out of our pullout, so, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, all the best for the rest of your championship. Congratulations. Thank you. Challenge yourself this summer at the Banana Boat Ocean Swim Series. Distances to suit all abilities. And this year hosting the New Zealand Secondary School Champs. So much more than a swim. Enter at oceanswim.co.nz Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success for over 20 years. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance. Expert advice and local service. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. Move now to event 17. Two more events this evening, and it is the 4x100 metre freestyle relay for men, and it's the club's relay. Let's welcome out the finalists.
So big relay here, Sophie, the club relay, 4x100 metre freestyle for men. Always a bit of a fun one, this one, and always see a bit of banter going on. Have, uh, in terms of relays for you, been involved in relays much in your career? Only a few. Um, my transition's not as fast as uh, some of others with two legs, but look, these boys are really, they're pumped. The clubs are out on the sidelines here, ready for, to cheer their teammates on, which is always so exciting. And that's what makes it relays exciting, right? So lane one, we have the Tasman team. In lane two, the Aquablades A team. In lane three, the Evolution A team. In lane four, the Capital A team. In lane five, the Faranui A team. In lane six, the Jazzy A team. In lane seven, the St. Peter's A team. In lane eight, the St. Paul's B team. Into the water, and away we go. The splash and dash times four 100s. Whole lot of water moving, and they go through the first 25, and let's have a look when they get to the 50 at the margin. And in lane five, it is the Faranui A team going off with a flyer. And they turn in uh, 23.76. Now Sophie... Uh, a relay, it does, people are more relaxed. Often you can get better results out of a relay, can't you? Absolutely, especially on a flying start as well. We'll see these boys come in and uh, take the plunge just as they come to touch the wall, but making sure that it's obviously a fine line before they do touch. We're talking about that this morning, the changeovers and how critical they are. You don't want to get too quick on it to get DQ'd and get your team DQ'd, but you don't want to be too conservative. And away we go. The arms flying around with these men. Uh, some of the best 100 freestylers in the country. And uh, the club honours won an honour that uh, so many clubs want to snatch at these championships. And lane number five, Wharanui, still in charge of this event. Capital Swim Club A. We're putting some of their heavyweight swimmers in shortly. And that margin closing a little bit. Capital A is just sneaking up. And in lane seven, that is St. Peter's. St. Peter's goes to the water just a fraction behind in lane seven. Faranui still holding the lead. Capital Swim Club A in lane four. That margin only a quarter of a body length sitting on his hip. 150 metres left to swim. Now, Sophie, what do you think these swimmers standing on the blocks are thinking right now? It's coming down to this last 100, so these two boys here will be definitely taking on the fight and knowing that they're going to have to put in a lot of work for this last one. Here with the, the coming in even into the wall. Uh, absolutely a bit of pressure on the shoulders of these final two swimmers. You never want that to happen. The fact that it's all on you. Completely even as they go. Wharanui versus Can Capital Swim Club. You don't want to let the team down. You don't want to let your squad down on the side of the pool. Always the most noise we ever hear in these championships. Can hardly even hear myself. Wharanui starting to take a lead. Quarter of a body length as they go through with 50 metres to swim. Wharanui holding strong. Capital doing his best. St. Peter's in lane 7, but lane 8 coming through strongly. Lane 8, St. Paul's is doing well. The B team, but 12 and a half metres left to swim. Faranui's going to sew this up. Capital Swim Club will take second. The club's going wild on the sideline. Faranui takes it out. 322.15.
Capital Swim Club a second back in 3.23 and it is St Paul's that will take out third an exciting 4x100 metre freestyle relay for clubs and we'll invite the team from Wharanui over to have a chat with me and talk us through how that one went Here with the team from Faranui and uh, what an effort, guys. Uh, it was close all the way to the end. Who swam last? I couldn't see. Right, so uh, relays back in the past uh, when it's all down to you. What a job you did to pull it back and take half a Berlin length to win it. But uh, all of you, a team effort. Uh, so give us a comment each about uh, what that feels to, to be the champion club in the country. Uh, it's a bit unreal, to be honest. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone. Obviously, our club, our supporters on the side. Yeah, it was pretty good. It feels good. Uh, yes, echoing Taiko's comments, it's pretty unreal. Uh, really is about swimming for your team, and I love swimming with these boys, so gave it everything I had. The boys did well, and a shout out to number one supporter over there from McDonald. Oh, that was pretty good, eh? Just an amazing race. Just can't. Well, the anchor is always an important part and you had capital just breathing right down your neck the whole way. But congratulations, guys. Well done. We move now to event 18 the final of the 4x100 metre freestyle club relay for women. Please welcome them to the pool deck. So some Sophie, some pretty good names there in there. We've got uh, Laura Littlejohn in uh, lane five for St. Paul's. It's going to be an interesting one, this one. What's your pick? I'm going to ask you what's your pick right now. Well, look, Hamilton Aquatics is the crowd favourite, and I, yeah, it's going to be close between three, four, and five. There you have it. No, I asked for you to, for the winner, so let's pick a winner. Oh, I can't. Look, I've got to be a Cantab supporter, so let's go Jazzy. Okay, lane one is the Jazzy team in lane one. In lane two, Evolution Aquatics Tauranga. In lane three, the team from Mount Monganui Swimming Club. In lane four, the team from Hamilton Aquatics. In lane five, the team from St. Paul's Swimming Club. Lane six is Capital Swim Club A. In lane seven is St. Peter's Swimming Club. And lane eight, Aquablades, New Plymouth, A. Into the pool, uh, Paige Flynn for Hamilton, Laura Littlejohn in lane five for St. Paul's. Had a wonderful meet so far, broken a few records. Molly Shivnan from the Mount in lane three. And look out for Hannah Abdo in lane one. Has had a great meet so far too. They're coming through lane five. That is Laura Littlejohn, no surprise there. And Sophie, some of these teams putting out their big guns early. Yeah, look, um, it's about being... Uh this is where the coach comes into it and, and, and puts their best where they believe they're going to obviously get the traction um, who's going to lead the field out but also about who's going to anchor that field obviously we saw in the boys that Faranui had a really great anchor that's right, uh, often the fastest swimmer will go 
last, maybe the second fastest swimmer goes first. And uh, Laura Littlejohn touches. Let's look at the split. 54-82, pretty smart time through the first 100. And a margin of two seconds over the second team. And that is, just looking at it, lane three, I think. Hamilton Aquatics. Jordan Williams in the water. SD Jacobs. And those swimmers trying to get out of the water. A bit of a battle there. They've got to get a wriggle on out of the water before the swimmers come back. Sophie Cowling next to me thinking they're going to be swum over. And we're into the second 100 here. And this is Ruby Heath in lane six for Capital. Lane five is Charlize Tordoff for St. Paul's. And on the blocks, ready and waiting. Sarah Gutzel for Hamilton. Kelly Lewis for St. Paul's. Lily Cooney for Mount Monganui. And Brooke Miles for Capital. Here we go into our third person. We're coming up to a really great last fourth uh, swim here. So these girls are setting it up for their last anchor. It's really close. Capital currently taking the lead. Capital Swim Cub take the lead. This is Brooke Miles. Sophie Irving waiting on the block. Some pressure on her shoulders. Lane three doing well too. Lily Cooney for Mount Monganui Swimming Club. But the middle lanes, Hamilton and St. Paul's, the fastest qualifiers, got some serious work to do. Capital Swim Club absolutely losing it over there on the side of the pool. Brooke Miles touches the wall. Sophie Irving heads in. She's got that crowd behind her. Zylika Pratt-Smith for Mount Monganui from Tauranga. Sophie Irving for Capital. Can George, uh, Gina McCarthy and Sarah Miller pull it back? I'm not sure. I think it's going to be between the Mount and Capital. Gina McCarthy coming up strong. Can she save it? Can she get this title? Gina McCarthy... Slowly making her way up on Zylika Pratt-Smith. Sophie Irving holding strong. I think Gina McCarthy's got in the hunt here. Gina McCarthy for Hamilton Aquatics, the hometown advantage. Gina McCarthy, can she get there? It's going to come down to the final five metres. Mount Monganui have won it. Mount Monganui win the relay by four one hundredths of a second. A gallant effort by Gina McCarthy, but just left the run a little bit too late. 350.05 for first, 350.09 for second, and 350.40. One of the closest club relays we've seen in a while. So Hamilton Aquatics second, Capital slipped into third. And we'll hear from the Mount Monganui team shortly. And remember, the medal ceremony will start immediately after this interview. The medal ceremony will start immediately after this interview. If the Mount Monganui team can come over and have a chat... Well done, ladies. Mount Monganui Swimming Club. Well, you're all going to have to have a chat, okay? So who am I going to go to first? You won it. It was four one-hundredths of a second, uh, ladies, and it uh, doesn't get much closer than that. So let's start. How does that feel as a club to be the fastest club in the country? 
Oh, it's awesome. We're so stoked. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in terms of Mount Monganui, what a wonderful place to live. Big Mount Main Beach there. It must be pretty cool living in the mount and swimming at the mount. Yes, it's really nice. And, and Bay Wave is your home centre? Yeah, yeah. So 25 metre pool, this is your bread and butter. You know you've got the turns, you've got everything. And uh, Molly, uh, who, was, who was leading you home today? Zylika, and you had Gina breathing right down there. And uh, could you see her, could you sense her there? Yeah, I could. I was trying to hold on, so, yeah. Does it make a difference that you're swimming for your club, for your region, for your, your, three, your three members here just in that final 100? Does it make a difference to how you swim? I didn't want to let them down, so, yeah, I really tried. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, I've let some of them off having a chat. So, uh, well done to Mount Monganui Swimming Club. Congratulations. I'd like to thank uh, the Technic of officials for this evening's session. We now invite the officials to make their way from pool deck. Please show your appreciation for our volunteers. I'd also like you to put your hands together and thank uh, Sophie Pascoe for some expert comments and doing a great job on the microphone with me tonight. It's been wonderful, Sophie. Look forward to seeing you maybe on the desk again another time soon. Thank you and all the best. From the schoolyard to the stadium, Aon has been helping Kiwis strive for sporting success on a local, regional and national level for over 20 years. We're proud to support New Zealand's sporting organisations and communities up and down the country. As New Zealand's leading insurance broker, we can also support you when it comes to your insurance, expert advice and local service. From quote to claim management, we're with you every step of the way. Talk to your local Aon insurance broker today. Challenge yourself this summer at the Banana Boat Ocean Swim Series. Distances to suit all abilities. And this year hosting the New Zealand Secondary School Champs. So much more than a swim. Enter at oceanswim.co.nz. Swimming is my favourite way to start the day. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle. Keeps me moving and keeps me alive. It's the reason I want to be the best one day. It's why we're going to be epic. See you in Topol. Tonight, lots of action and uh, almost took the roof off with those club relays, always do, and uh, a lot of passion out there for their clubs and trying to take those honours. And now we look forward to recognising the performances of tonight with the medal ceremonies for the 50 metres breaststroke. And, of course, the 4x100 metre club relay as well. And we'll be underway with that very shortly. Great to chat with Sophie Pascoe about some of her experiences, um, some of the tips and skills she uses to become the champion she has been. And what a career, 27 years old. Uh, she's been uh, at the top of her game for well over a decade. And still breaking world records and she'll be looking to find some of those international competitions over the 
the next uh, six to 12 months and uh, hoping, like everyone, that the Olympic Games will take place in Japan next year. Uh, all, uh, all talk is that it will happen, but we know not to, to get too excited about things with the way the world is right now, but uh, the Olympics would be just a magnificent event for the whole of world sport to be witnessing uh, the best swimmers in the world. And as we've seen at these championships, sometimes a year of training or six months of training with no competitions done a lot of swimmers a whole lot of good. And speaking with Byron Reid, Zach Reid's father, a former New Zealand champion breaststroker, we were talking about that earlier this morning, about uh, some of these swimmers will, I guess, take... Uh, take that six months of training and no racing as a reason or an excuse to to not not think they can swim their best and others will think it's an opportunity to swim at their best because they've grown a little bit a little bit older and got a little bit stronger and so just waiting on uh, a green light on the medal ceremonies we're going to kick off the medal ceremonies now We start with event 14, it, sorry, event 13, the men's 50 metre breaststroke final result, the medal ceremony in the bronze medal position in 28.29 from Kiwi West, Luan Grobola. In the silver medal position in 27.93 from Aquablades, Zahn Collins. And winning the gold medal in 27.80 from Evolution, Joshua Gilbert. Move now to the medal ceremony for the women's 50 metre breaststroke final. In the bronze medal position in 32.06 from Porirua, Bronner Ryan. In the silver medal position in 32.03 from Northwave, Kara Smith. And winning the gold medal in 31.46 from Jazzy, Kaylee Jackson. Moving now to event 17, the men's 4x100 metre club freestyle relay. In the bronze medal position, in 3.27.03, made up of Matthew Hyde, Carlos Hardy, Dominic Faulkner and Ben Littlejohn from St Paul's. It's the St Paul's team, third place. And in second place, the silver medalists, Atakura Julian, Sam Brown, Lachlan O'Connor and Eli Ashby in 323 Capital Swim Club. And winning in 322.15, Taiko Torepi Ormsby, Tom Trever, William Campbell, Thomas McGibbon, Faranui.
Capital in third, Hamilton Aquatics second, and Mount Monganui first in the men's relay. We move now to event number... Sorry, that <laughs> Event 18, the women's 4x100 metre freestyle club relay. In third place, in 350.40, Ruby Heath, SD Jacobs, Brooke Miles, and Sophie Irving, the Capital Swim Club team. And in the silver medal position in 350.09, made up of Paige Flynn, Jordan Williams, Sarah Gutzel, and Gina McCarthy, Hamilton Aquatics. And winning in a time of 350.05, Molly Shivnan, Lucy Bartlett, Lily Cooney, and Zylika Pratt Smith, Mount Monganui Swimming Club. Well, that concludes this evening's medal ceremony and session four of the 2020 Aon New Zealand Short Course Championships. It's been an exciting night of racing. The highlight for me, the 400 metre individual medley for men with Lewis Clearbert just scratching Dean Kent's 17-year-old New Zealand record and Sam Brown's New Zealand age group record there in the 16-year-old category and also Erica Fairweather uh, coming through to win the 100 freestyle in a new New Zealand age group record there as well. So it's been a great evening. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to welcoming you back for day three tomorrow morning with coverage starting at 20 minutes past eight, live and free on the Sky Sport Next YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, and good evening.